I'd like to start by asking you how you came to know Mike. Uh, it was kind of a, just a coincidence. I was working in Philadelphia, and I, it was before I was into filmmaking at all. Um, I just kind of started thinking about making films and stuff like that. But I was in Philadelphia, and uh, they were filming one of the Rocky movies at that time. Right. And it was Rocky Balboa, uh, which is like the sixth movie. And so uh, I spotted this guy, Mike, and he had this giant painting of Sylvester Stallone. And it was obvious that he painted it. Yeah. And I walked up to him, and the security guards were walking up to him, and he looked like Sly, he talked like Sly, and everyone just kind of gravitated towards him. And uh, and so, you know, they were all. T I am a Rocky fan, of course. I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to do this without being a Rocky fan. And uh, you know, the security guards were started to take a liking to him, and they were tipping him off and saying. You know, Stallone's gonna be right here. You know, don't move. In two hours, he'll be right here. So I hung out with Mike that day because I, I was working there and I kind of had the day off and hung out and just uh, uh, met him that way. But the thing, the reason I stayed in touch with him was I worked in Philly all the rest of the week and every night he was on the local news. You know, they did those stories yeah. of like, you know, uh, Stallone's back in Philly and no one's <laughs> happier than Mike Kunda. You know, and he's like, yo, how you doing? I'm so happy. He's, you know. So every night he was on the news, and uh, uh, before I left him, he said, uh, hey, stay in touch with me. I'm on the StalloneZone.com. So yeah. the Stallone Zone, the <laughs> forum, was where like maybe once a month I'd kind of check in, and sure enough, to my surprise, like there he was. I mean, he was as committed as he acted he was. So yeah, I kind of kept up with him there. And when did you decide you wanted to make a film about him? Um, he, it, was, it was like the perfect storm because I started to get a little bit more serious about becoming a filmmaker and um, I was keeping in touch with him and then he wrote a book. Right. He wrote a book about his life and that's when I thought, this guy's dead serious about this uh, and I better do this before someone else does. You know, I kind of yeah. had that, that feeling. So I just uh, finally bought a camera. I literally learned how to use it on the way down to Philly, on the drive down to Philly. and. Uh, I just started filming them, and I thought like I thought I'd do like a five-minute piece, yeah. you know, just something to start <laughs> do some work, and someone would see it, and uh, and then you spent five years with him. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> but the, the the clincher was I one of the first things we did was interview his parents, that, you know, you'd see mm -hmm. in the trailer, and uh, yeah, I mean it was like five minutes in, I thought, oh my gosh, this is something serious. I mean his. They were just spilling their guts about how, how proud they are of them and, and how worried they are about them. And, and it just really, I mean, we, I sat down with them for two hours and, and interviewed them. And, uh, and uh, I knew it was, you know, some, it was something that deserved a lot yeah. more time. So is Mike like a really well-known figure in Philadelphia? He, he is definitely starting to become one. Right. Yeah, he, um, you know, and you'll see in the movie kind of his, his struggle of like, what, what is, you know, what do you do with this? You know, hmm. because he, he does, you'll see in the film, like, he doesn't really have a passion for anything else. Like, this is his passion, and, uh, you know, he, it's about how he deals with that and, and how he kind of carves out something for himself. So he is, like, he definitely has uh, fans yeah. himself, yeah. And how did he react when you first said, Mike, I'd like to make a film about you? Oh, he, he was all about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he's all about it in every step of the way. And I always say, like, he, he's like the best subject. I mean, he was like very proactive. Uh, he's almost like a producer, you know? Yeah. He's like, this is going on, here's the times, you know, let, let's, let's get up there and do this. And uh, the first time uh, we went out to film him, we, we stayed at his house, you know, we spent the night at his house for three nights, and like 5 a.m., yeah. he'd, he'd be pouncing around the house with his, <laughs> he's got the Rocky boots, and they're loud as could be. And that was like our wake-up call every morning was, was him like, all right, guys, let's go. Let's, let's go to the park. Let's go do this. Let's go watch me exercise. You know, so he had a lot of ideas. He brought a lot to the table. I'm doing some reading around Mike. Um, yeah. as, you know, the film's quite sensitive look at his life. It's very sympathetic. But, you know, there is a lot of tragedy in his life. Was it a decision early on to shy away from that or on your part? What, uh, what, what do you mean tragedy? I mean, just I read an interview with him that, you know, like, uh, he was bullied as a child, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that him and his wife couldn't have children, yeah. and these things helped him cope with that. Yeah. Uh, but the documentary touches on them, but it doesn't really linger on them. It's far more about his story as yeah. you know, a Rocky impersonator. Was there a reason you chose to avoid them? Um, let me think about that. That's a good question. No one, no one has asked that. But, um, you know, part of the reason was we wanted to kind of keep it present as yeah. much as we could um, and see how things develop. Um, 
but you know it was it was cool to to be to stay present and, and get his his struggles now you know mm. like we wanted to be there for those and make make sure we're there to document what's going on like you know as recently as possible yeah. um, and you know it was it was kind of hard to we, we tried to interview like or are there any of these bullies that we can interview or, yeah. or anyone like that we almost like I wish we this is the one thing I wish we would have done was uh, he had a high school reunion a couple yeah. years ago and he didn't go but we really tried to get him to go to, to, to film it and, and that didn't happen so so that would have been cool but, yeah but uh, but no I think uh, I think he struggles pretty 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 well in this one. Right. <laughs> um, you know, you mentioned that you filmed for five years. Yeah. Uh, was it a smooth production? What, why was the long, such a long development process? Um, it, it, was, it was really smooth, actually. I mean, the, the times that we went out to shoot them were, like, super fruitful. You know, like, yeah. we got a lot of content. Um, but really, it was only because uh, we weren't getting paid to do it. Um, and me and uh, Danny, the editor on this, started a business, and we do commercial work. And really, it was just uh, it, it was just a time thing, you know. It was like I have three kids, and we tried to, you know, do our work when we could, and we were super busy, and we'd come to this, come back to this as much as we could, and uh, but it, it worked out because the the stretch of time helped. Okay, so it wasn't a challenge for you as a director, no. like with those gaps between time. No, story. not really. I, I I just wish we would have been able to do more almost. But, right. Uh, but uh, no, it worked out. It worked out well. We just had, kind of had to be patient but uh, this was always something that you know we'd be working on other, other projects and like this was always in the back of our head I mean this is we just both really love this story and uh, loved you know following Mike around and, and getting his story and even editing we spent a long time editing and uh, just trying to get it just right so with you spending so long with Mike were there any scenes you filmed that you couldn't fit into the film but you really wanted to include uh, let me think about that um, there was, yeah, you know what? There was, there was two things. Um, there was, and he, and he struggled about this too. Was uh, he knows Chuck Wepner? I don't know if anyone knows Chuck Wepner, but he's actually the real life boxer that inspired Sylvester Stallone. Okay. And Mike, you know, through his his ways, has become like good friends with Chuck Wepner. And we sat down with Chuck uh, for a couple hours in his apartment and interviewed him. And we also interviewed Larry Holmes, which is a, a former heavyweight champion, uh, and, and kind of has some ties to, to Stallone and Philly and the fight scene, obviously. But uh, I think we all would have loved to have those stars in there. Yeah. But they really, like, this story is about Mike, and it's about Mike's, like, struggle and, and what, what Mike's going through and his, like, kind of pursuit of happiness. And they just didn't, it was too hard to get him in. Mm. You know, there was kind of no reason to get them in. Uh, you mentioned stars there, and obviously he was waiting outside for Sly. Yeah. Did he meet him? Uh, he, we did. Yeah, I was actually with him, and we did meet him, but it was real quick. It was just like a, you know, like a super fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Mike recently has had some uh, some real interactions with Stallone, and Stallone knows him now, uh, and definitely like one day uh, he called him over, Mike, come here. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. So that was just recently. Yeah, and that that was a really like Mike, Mike had some runnings run-ins with Stallone, uh, but this one recently was very genuine. And he loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> I mean, it was it was emotional. I mean, even me, I, like I watched an iPhone video of it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is finally, you know, one of those meetings that he had been looking for. Um, so you mentioned Mike's parents there, yeah. and I know that they do feature in the documentary quite a bit. How? <laughs> You know, you, you, you said they're very proud of him. 25 to 30 jobs, no real focus outside of this one driving passion. I've seen from looking online that he does tours of Philly, does the Rocky tour. Uh, how do, uh, what, sounds strange to say, why are they proud of him? But like, why, you know, no. do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Um, you, you know, it's, and you know, the, the, this film definitely goes into this all, uh, quite a bit, but um, his, his dad, you know, just loves that he's doing he loves that Mike is doing what he loves. Yeah. You know, Mike, he's carved out this whole world based around Rocky, and, and his dad is very proud that he's followed his passion. Yeah. Um, and the, the, you'll see in the movie, his, his mom is definitely proud of him and loves him, but she's not as excited as, <laughs> as his dad is about it all. Right. And it it's, uh, you know, subtly shows you know, right. in, in the film. And I think, like, she just, you know, wants a more... Uh, 
traditional Same. level of success, you know, yeah, yeah. and she just wants him to go to college and, you know, and, and, and do all that stuff, as he says. But uh, so, but yeah, they're just, they're just proud of him that he's happy. And I mean, he keeps moving forward, you know, he keeps striving for, you know, what's the next goal? What's the next goal with, with this? With this dream of his. <laughs> it, it sounds like passion is like the central theme of the film essentially. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean it, it is passion and, and uh, you know that's that's Mike's you know m the theme that Mike naturally follows is to follow his passion but you know Danny and I uh, the editor we poured our hearts into this too and really this is like our first documentary hmm. feature-length documentary and you know his his story started to impact us. I mean, we had to finish this thing. You yeah. know, it was like, oh, we got to finish this. We, you know, we, we, you know, it's almost like taking Mike's advice, like follow your passion, follow your dreams, get it, you know, finish it, do it, do the best you can, you know. And uh, so that's, there's a lot of us in this movie too. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Cause yeah. I was going to ask, is it difficult as a documentarian, especially, you know, like the first time documentarian, yeah. try, uh, keeping a level of impartiality with your subject or do you find yourself getting involved in his story. Yeah, I mean, the, the cool thing is like, uh, you can do whatever you want because it's our film, yeah. you know, and no one asked for it. And that, that part is so cool because we do a lot of work where, you know, with clients and everything like that. So uh, the first part of the answer is, you know, no, it's not hard because we can do whatever we want. But I, I did really struggle uh, with how close I started to get to Mike. Yeah. And, you know. And would Danny, sorry, would Danny yeah. come down with you to Philly? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, he yeah he was on most of the shoots. Yeah. I think just the first and second one, he wasn't with us. But, right. But, uh, yeah, and, um, oh, so, yeah, I got really close to him, and, and, and that started to worry me, like, you know, mm -hmm. how objective can I be with this? Um, and then I also worried about, like, what Mike's going to think of it. You know, is yeah. this film going to hurt his feelings? I mean, there's some some hard to watch scenes in here with Mike in it. And, and you know, we had to show those. And, uh, you know, when I got really close to finishing, we had like a rough cut. And uh, there's a movie that I really love and, and it motivated me to make this film actually. It was called, uh, I think we're alone now. Mm -hmm. And it was about um, two guys that are obsessed with the, the uh, teen singer Tiffany from the <laughs> 80s. Right. And so, I called him, they, I became friends with that director and I called the director and I said, man, I'm, I'm really not, I'm so close to this thing now, I'm really not sure if I'm, I'm painting this guy in a, in a horrible light or I'm, or I'm being too soft, you know, like, I, you know, wh what do you think? I'm, I'm really nervous that, you know, it's gonna ruin, it could ruin his life, you yeah. know, I mean, this is his life. It's a goofy story and everything, but this is someone's life mm -hmm. and that's a big responsibility. And, um, you know, he said to me, Jim, you know, uh, I, the, when I made my film, one of the guys has Asperger's in his film, and uh, he said he really struggled with that, and then all of a sudden, at, at the end, when he released it, he started getting, um, he'd get these letters that were like, this is so great, you know, this is so great, the way you shed light on Asperger's and the story you told, it was so, you know, very heartfelt, and he said, you know what, Jim, I got an equal number of letters that were the opposite, and they were saying, like, how dare you, how dare you do this? And he said to me, you know what, Jim, I started to realize their criticism of my movie told me more about them yeah, yeah. Than, than my film. And, uh, and it's so true. Like, we've showed this you know, to all kinds of people throughout the process, and it, it's like a Rorschach test. Yeah. I mean, it really, like, you know, I, I, you know, I hope I'm not giving too much away, but, you know, some people watch it, and, and they're like, what a great story, man. I, you know, I cried at the end. What, how uplifting. And then other people just blow it off like, oh my gosh, what a weirdo. You yeah. know, what a, this is, why would he do this? You know? and, uh, and, and that's really exciting to me. And, and the other thing is we get a lot of people that say, uh, I get it. It's a story about him and his dad. Or I get it. It's, it's a love story. It's about him and his wife. And, yeah. and you can tell like that something's going on with them and they're identifying with that. And, and to be honest, there is some truth to all of those. Yeah, you know, yeah. there are some themes in there that uh, when they talked about him and his dad, I was really excited that people picked up on that because that was that, something that I wanted to be in there. That's really cool. So has Mike seen the film? Oh yeah, yeah. Mike's seen the film. And what did, what does he get out of it? Is that was that was uh, that was scary because I, I didn't know what to do. I I scheduled a big showing in Detroit, mm -hmm. uh, partly because we needed a deadline to get it done. <laughs> yeah. So I scheduled the show and I um, never showed him any of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had it just about finished. 
and we were about a week away from showing it in Detroit, and he was coming with his, his uh, wife and his mom and his dad to Detroit to see it, and I kind of freaked out, and uh, I had a trip planned. It was actually to Seattle, and instead of flying home, I flew to Philly to show it to him and his wife, because I was getting super nervous. Right. They were getting super nervous, and uh, we sat in his living room, and uh, us three watched the film, and um, he, he really... He loved it. He said, this is a Rocky movie, Jim. This is a Rocky yeah. movie. And that made me super excited because to make a Rocky movie as a Rocky <laughs> fan is cool. And then I was also excited that he liked it. But uh, there are a couple scenes in it that they were super uncomfortable with. Were there any, was there ever any conversations about maybe taking them out or? I, don't, I think they knew that not to ask. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm sure they probably would have wanted it out. There's one scene where in the movie, and I, I won't give it away too much, but uh, I've noticed, like in some of the screenings, his wife will leave before uh, before it comes right, out. Okay. It's uncomfortable. You've seen it, right? I've not seen oh, it. Oh, no, okay, no, okay no. good. So yeah, there's a, a scene towards the end where I, I've noticed, like she'll get up and go. Oh right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, like that. Um, I just want to touch on the title. Yeah. Uh, how does Mike feel about the title? Because there are two ways to read into it. Obviously, you've got the pretender because he literally pretends right. to be Rocky. But at the same time, calling someone a pretender can be quite a negative thing. Yeah. You know, how does he feel about that? Um, same thing. Uh, yeah. Him and his him and his dad both. Uh, they didn't like it at, at first at all. Uh, no. Mike warmed up to it pretty quick because he thought it was clever. Mm. You know, and, and he through what Mike does, he he is a showman, so he gets that. Right. You know, like what a great title. You know, uh, but. They were nervous about it, and his dad actually pulled me aside one day and said, you know, Jim, I, you know, he puts his, his arm on my shoulder, and, you know, I was really nervous. I didn't like the pretender. I didn't like the pretender. But, um, but I, think, I think that the movie really, it addresses that. You know, like, yeah. it, you know, is, it, is he a pretender? You know, is he pretending, or is he, you know, following his passion? So there, there is that, that kind of play on the word. Um, but yeah, they, at first they weren't very happy with it. Did they have any alternate suggestions for it? Uh, no, but we Rocky God. Seven. No, oh. we we had like uh, we <laughs> Rocky Thirteen. We had like uh, another Rocky. I oh, had, like that, yeah. And uh, he didn't like that. Not that it was up to him, but yeah. he didn't like that. You know, he's like, oh, that just sounds like a blow off. And I was like, oh yeah, maybe. So we had another Rocky. We had uh, the distance because that's a theme in the Rocky movies, like going the distance. Uh, but that wasn't really applicable. So. Uh, I actually kind of got the idea from one of the Creed movies, and he, there's a line in the movie, and he says like, "You're no contender, you're a pretender." Oh, and right. I thought, okay. Oh, that could be cool, you know. And, and it, you know, totally was applied to our film. So that was kind of where the the germ of the idea. came I like from. that. Yeah. It comes it comes full circle yeah. on itself. Yeah. Almost. Um, it's going to be the UK premiere tonight, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Uh, what are you hoping the audience reactions like? Um, and don't just say, I hope they like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, um, I, I hope that, that people do pick up on the, on the different themes. I hope that it, it's, I actually like, I mean, the, the dream is really like, when I was a kid and I saw the Rocky movies, like that would like last with me for 24 hours. I'd like, oh man, I'm so pumped up. And yeah. I, I hope that ideally like people get like fired up at the end, like get motivated uh, by it and are uh, inspired by it. And uh, also, you know, I, I love that people like pick up on these different themes and really identify with, you know, the dad or his, his wife or, you know, the, just the people in the town and stuff like that. Uh, th that's, that's kind of uh, the ideal situation. To move but, away from Mike for a bit yeah. and, and the film, uh, you mentioned that you've loved movies like Rocky since yeah. you were a kid. You know, you mentioned that you learned how to use the camera on the drive to Philadelphia, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, very prepared. <laughs> yeah, um, right. actually, what, have you always had this feeling in the back of your mind that you want to be a filmmaker? Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, yeah, yeah, totally. And yeah. it was before I even knew uh, what a filmmaker was. You know, I, I just loved movies, and I, I was just talking about this the other day. Like, one of the first things I ever did was, you know, hook up two VCRs, and mm. and actually, I, I I edited a montage of Rocky training back to back so I had like a, a you know 30 minute training edit together but yeah I, I always wanted to make movies movies are like a kind of something that bonds my family you know yeah. we all get together and watch movies together and and really get into it and uh, I mean for this to be the first full length doc that I made is like it almost makes me emotional because I, I love the Rocky movies and and I, I I really love this movie you know and, and I think it's got a 
a great message, and uh, it, it, this is a dream. I mean, this is totally my dream yeah. to make this film and, and, and bring it to festivals. So if there's anything you could change about the film, and I realize you just said that it's your, you know, yeah, yeah, you no, love no. it, but if there was one change you could make, what would it be? Oh, man. Let's see. What could we do? Hmm. Um, I don't know. Jeez, without giving something away, too. Don't give it away. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I don't know. I, not, not nothing huge. I mean, we did it. We did have like a, a soundtrack that we didn't love, a score, and yeah. we rescored it to make sure that we loved it. Um, I quite like how hesitant you are to answer this one. Though. Yeah, because it really, says that you're really yeah. like proud of what you've actually done. Yeah, yeah, really. I don't know. I, I nothing. Okay. I, I mean, the only thing I can think of, and it's kind of lame, is just to be there with them more, you know, to, no, to make a, more trips to Philly. But that's yeah. a perfectly reasonable answer. Yeah. So my next question was going to be, if you'd had the budget, what would you have done to the, on the film? And I think you've covered it there. Yeah. You just spent as much time as you possibly yeah. could with Mike. Yeah. And you know, maybe change the score. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, that would be a more, definitely more time spent with them. Um, you mentioned an inspiration for this particular, well, same inspiration, influence on this particular film was I Think We're Alone Now. Uh, yeah. But are there any filmmakers or films that have inspired you as a director? Um, well, I, uh, Scorsese is my favorite. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm an Italian American like him. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, one of the things uh, when DVDs first came out and I watched Raging Bull on DVD and the behind the scenes and Scorsese doing the commentary, like, that blew my mind. Like I didn't even know what a director did. You know, like he talked about, uh, you know, when Jake LaMotta was doing well, they took four boxing rings and, and strung them all together and put the ropes on the out and made it a huge ring so yeah. it felt nice and airy and he was winning and, and feeling good. And I thought, you can do that? Like, what the heck? <laughs> you can, you know, just change, you know, whatever you want and make it feel like you wanted to. And that's, that was like the first time I realized like what a director did and I, yeah, I think ever since then, that's that's definitely what I wanted to do. But that I think we're alone now. As far as docs go, that that was one that inspired this, and uh, the, you know, the movie Clerks when I was in high school inspired me because it was, you know, so cheaply made. And uh, uh, Donkey, there was that uh, uh, that donkey. It was that documentary about uh, Donkey Kong, uh, Fistful of Quarters. Oh yeah. That was another one that inspired inspired me to make this one, and just that kind of slice of life underdog story. So I, I'm a lover of underdog stories too. Huge range of influences, then, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think that um, is there any way to get this on Sylvester Stallone's desk? Do you think? Uh, he saw it. Has he? What yeah. was his reaction? He he loved it. He really yeah. liked it. Yeah. He it was the time he met Mike recently. Uh, and he talked to him a little bit and he said, you know, there's a, I made a, there's a documentary and he had heard about it, Sloan did. And he said, I heard about this, you know, send me a trailer. So, you know, we're like right now. So he watched the trailer on his phone. He watched that trailer on his phone and then uh, they called me and like his, assist, his assistant called me and said, Sly wants to see the movie. Can you send us a link right away? So I sent him a link and I think I stayed up all night like waiting <laughs> for some kind of response. And then uh, it, I guess he watched it like that night in his hotel. He was filming in, yeah. in Philly, and uh, I heard like the following week that he he uh, he really loved it, and he he loves what what Mike's doing, and it you know made him proud that somebody was like carrying the torch for him. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I am getting the wrap up now, so I'll ask okay. one last cool. question. Cool. Uh, what advice would you offer to aspiring filmmakers who haven't started making their own film yet? Um, I I would say you know obviously like obviously just start, but the the best. Um, advice that I had was like finish it yeah. just finish it because there, there are so many people that start something or talk about it and and even if it's bad I think like even if this was bad I'd still be proud of it that it was finished uh, but you know the first time I showed it and the audience kind of you know started clapping it felt way better than just finishing it but I, I think just just do something and, and finish it just finish it is the biggest advice that I got and, and made me feel really good and made me feel really, uh, give me a lot of courage to do another thing, to you know, keep going, so. Great advice. Yeah, yeah. Jim Toscano, everyone, thank you very much. Thanks, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.